Hi everyone. What I'd like to start with is a video on just kind of giving you a little bit of background information on assessment and technology or again as I say kind of activate um, what you already probably know and kind of put it in within the context of what we're working on and then how we lay technology or how technology can be a tool to help us with assessment in classrooms and so these um, these will be the questions that I kind of want you to think about um, and that those will be like what types of assessment will you use in your classroom? How can you ex assess technology use and or student projects that use technology in the classroom? Okay, and then last, what are some online tools that can be used to design assessments? So I think after this flip lecture and our work together, um, you should be able to answer these questions. I want to come back to and, and kind of urge you to, again, start thinking about your TPAC lesson plan or the lesson plan that we're requiring here in 201. Again, I will ask you to uh, really uh, review the materials that we have on Blackboard about lesson plans. Uh, look at the example lesson plans that I've posted you know, that I have found online that I think are, are good examples, but also that sheet that outlines these are the parts of the lesson plan that we want in uh, the lesson plan that you'll be handing in. And when you examine uh, that handout, what you will see is that the first part of the assignment is really all about the lesson plan. It's the objectives, it's the procedures, it's the materials that you'll use and those kinds of things, okay? Typical parts of a lesson plan that you'll see. The second part is really focused on assessment. So we are going to um, really require you to have an assessment uh, developed and designed for the students in your class, okay? So that's kind of what we're talking about here. And then the third part, just as a reminder, we also require what we call a student project uh, or a student product. So whatever you decide to do uh, for the lesson, you will actually make or develop the project as a student would do and I'll talk more about this as, as we get closer as well but right now I just kind of want to focus you on to the assessment so um, as I said just a little while ago here this lesson plan you guys these are the parts that um, we're requiring for our lesson plan. The ones in with the asterisks are probably ones that, you know what, these I, I expect. You know, um, as a teacher, I expect to have to be able to write objectives. I expect to align my lesson with content and technology standards. I know I got to list the materials and I know I got to list the procedures. We have some other things in here that I'll talk about again a little bit more um, in the upcoming weeks, but with description of an instructional context, you remember the dotted line in TPAC is real important, and so um, describing that context is something that we want to do. Um, we also want you to talk about the role of technology and those kinds of things. So again, look at that handout and that will provide you with more information. But in the assessment, we actually ask for two things, two parts. One, we want you to describe or provide a, a brief description on what you will do to assess the students in your class. Then the second part is actually developing the tool that you will use to assess the students who have completed your lesson plan. Okay, so you really do create the assessment, whatever it is. But 
we also want it described, okay? So hopefully after this flipped experience, and again, conversations that we have that follow that will follow, you will have a better idea and we'll start thinking about that assessment piece, okay? So in order to do that, what I wanna do is just kind of, again, activate maybe some prior knowledge of these types of assessment that we have in our classrooms. And you guys, it's this isn't, um, um, again, I don't think it's going to be anything new, but what I want to provide it for you for is so that you will use this academic language in that description that we want in that lesson plan. We want you to talk like a teacher, you know, to think like a teacher in in terms of the evaluation and and again that's why we call it academic language we want you to be able to um, uh, describe what this assessment will look like so here i've provided just a few examples and and again just to jar that memory the first one is informal and formal assessment. And this is, again, an easy way to think about it, or one way to think about it. Informal assessment would be um, typically a lot of that, uh, it's just the teacher just takes the time to kind of informally assess students. Uh, it might be a teacher walking around the classroom and with a checklist and just seeing if students are on task, seeing what they're doing. Uh, I might informally assess all of you. You know, who's showing up for class? Who is not? Uh, who's engaged? Who's answering the questions? Who's not? You know, though that is all informal assessment. A lot of times what we do is that disposition, and that's, that's important too. Formal, when we talk about a formal assessment, that is more targeted at, you know, that's the exams, those are the projects, those are the assignments, those are the weekly problems, whatever they are. You know they're coming and, and they're usually scheduled and set up. So those are ones that students, you know, know are coming. So you guys, that's kind of when we talk about assessment kind of informally or formally. And so think about, are you going to have an informal assessment or a formal assessment maybe as part of your lesson plan? The next one is formative and summative. Um, and it's not like you're going to have all of these. You just kind of pick one. We just want you to talk about it correctly. So the second one is formative versus summative. Formative assessment, well, no, let me start with summative, actually. It's a little bit easier. Summative assessment is that assessment that you almost use to summarize something that you have taught. So that usually happens at the end of something when it's done. So it's like a chapter test, a unit test. The final exam would be probably summative. That would be our, our example of summative at least um, in, in 201. Formative is that ongoing assessment that, are, that occurs throughout a period of time, okay? And the formative assessments usually lead up to the completion of a summative type of assessment. So formative would be those kind of checkpoints that a teacher uses to make sure that the students are progressing well. Um, we do this, I think, periodically and all the time in 201 when I have you do things in lecture just to see how you're doing, um, see that you're keeping up, even the assignments and so forth. We just had a portfolio check. Okay, that's a formative assessment leading up to the final um, grading of your portfolio, course portfolio. So formative assessment formative and summative are used quite frequently by teachers in terms of their academic language describing the assessments that they do in their classrooms. 
objective and subjective. Again, these are um, used a lot in, in education. And objective is usually that type of uh, uh, assessment where there is a right answer. You know, it's very objective. It's it's right or wrong, and it's easy to assess that way. Subjective is usually, you know, there's that almost, it's not teacher error, but it's, you know, consistency. Um, I may grade something a little bit different than somebody else because assessment is subjective. It's, you know, a lot of things occur that uh, that you have to take into account in how you assess, okay? So again, objective is pretty clear cut. Subjective is a little bit more maybe looser. Um, and then it just, it, it might show bias. It might show, um, you know, you don't want it to, but it, everyone's a little bit different in how they grade. Okay. That one, those two are a little bit harder to explain, but it, it happens all the time in, in education. The last one is uh, criterion reference kind of tests and norm reference tests. These are usually exams. Criterion reference are usually those exams that are created by teachers. You know, they're created by teachers uh, like as unit exams. Your midterm well, to me is kind of a criterion referenced exam. I created it based off of my objectives and what I wanted you to learn uh, up to that point in the class. The final exam would be a criterion reference exam, okay? Those made up by the teachers and so forth for a specific purpose. Norm referenced exams are those that are a little bit bigger um, in terms of uh, who takes them and, and um, how they're developed. Norm reference tests would be like the Iowa Tests of Basic Skills, ACTs, SATs, because they're norm referenced across a larger population, and then that's how the grades are distributed. Okay, so we do use norm reference testing in classrooms, but I don't, I don't think you see that as much, and, and I know you aren't going to use this for your lesson plan, okay? But you could use a criterion referenced exam, okay? But again, I think what you want to do, it's one of those things where you want to make sure that you're using the correct type of assessment and talking about it correctly when you're um, describing such tools and approaches in your lesson plan, okay? So what we want to focus on is really how are, how are we assessing or how do we assess using technology in the classroom? That's what's important to us. I think when we use technology in the classroom, sometimes we have to use specific um, assessment approaches that align better to assess such projects and stuff. And so you've you've had great experiences, I think, with that already in this class, okay? So what you are going to do next is you're going to watch a, the movie World War II Rationing. And like I said in the introduction, uh, you have already watched this movie, but I think it would be to your advantage to watch it again from the perspective of think about if I if I was a teacher I got this project from students how would I assess it how would I figure out you know how it, it's not just getting this digital story and saying you did a great job Students need to know what you know. What are they being assessed on, so that they can align that with it? Okay, so that they can align what they do with how they're being assessed. So watch the movie, and then go ahead and and go to the next step. Okay, see you in a minute.